Investigators have revealed that dozens in the mob that stormed the Capitol on January 6 had ties to the U.S. military. The Pentagon is now trying a new effort to address extremism in its ranks. ABC's Martha Raddatz has more on the tough work ahead. In the early hours of last January 6th, among the thousands listening to Donald Trump on the National Mall, Brian Snow caught my eye. Why do you have your body armor on? Uh, I have the body armor on for protection. I'm a father of four kids. And I've seen a lot of evidence of people being attacked, uh, stabbed, shot for attending a Trump supporter rally, even if they're not Trump supporters. The Army veteran had driven 12 hours from his Indiana home to attend the Stop the Steal rally. The president asked for people to come himself, so, you know, that's what we do. Do you think Joe Biden was legitimately elected president? No, not, not even a little bit. January 6th. Nearly one year later, we asked Snow to meet us back in D.C., despite the more than 60 unsuccessful lawsuits filed by former President Trump and his allies and zero evidence of widespread voter fraud, Snow is seemingly more convinced than ever that the false claims of a stolen election are real. If Donald Trump came out tomorrow and said, you know what, Joe Biden won, okay. would you believe him? I don't. I think that that election is so wrought with, so tainted, it doesn't matter what anybody says anymore. And no argument will convince him otherwise. If there's not fraud or no worry of fraud, then why, why do the American people not deserve and get wide open transparency? They did. Well, not really. <laughs> And while Snow said he did not join the protesters on Capitol Hill after the rally that day and called the violence against police officers unfortunate and appalling, he still defends the dozens of current and former members of the military who participated, temporarily derailing the certification of the election results. They, like you, took an oath to support and defend the Constitution. Yes, ma'am. That what they were doing in your view? Yes, absolutely. If that's what they felt that they needed to do to protect the Constitution from enemies both foreign and domestic. But it's completely the opposite of the Constitution itself. I, I, I disagree. The numbers of veterans on the Hill that day was astonishing. More than 80 of the some 700 facing criminal charges for the assault on the Capitol had a military background. It was uh, gut-wrenching to see them storming the building and to do so as if they had the authority to do so. Um, it goes against everything we were, we, we swore an oath to, to protect. David Smith, a former Navy medic who served in Afghanistan, was working near the Capitol that day. So it was, uh, it was literally watching what felt like democracy falling, honestly. Um, so it was, uh, it was pretty scary. And sobering for the Pentagon in the wake of the attack, outlining new guidelines and definitions for prohibited extremist activities, beginning for the first time at recruiting centers. Do you have any new ties to or association to any extremists or hate groups now? No. So weeding out extremism or extremists right now at this stage is very important because this is where everything is going to start at. The people that's coming in right now are going to be the people that's leading us um, in about 20 years, 15 years down the line. Commanders can also look at service members' social media history once a red flag is raised, and the guidance includes what constitutes dissemination of extremist materials online, such as posting, liking, or retweeting. But so many say there's still so much more that needs to be done. When we talk about veterans and their willingness to serve, they have an undying patriotism. And when politicians can manipulate that, that's going to give them uh, a lot of power. We've got to find some way to reach these veterans. And they're not falling into these groups where they are being indoctrinated and they are being radicalized and they're they're doing what they're doing on January 6th. And with the number of extremist crimes committed by veterans even outside of January 6th jumping significantly in the past decade, the worry is without even further action, it will only get worse. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.